Today we're going to examine some tissues to get a sense of how you might look at them under the microscope and what aspects of the tissues are most important to tell what they are if you're looking at tissues you've never seen before. I'm always looking at two different things when I'm looking at tissues, one of which is essentially the cell portion of it, what do the cells look like, and then the other is the surrounding structures. Cells are usually fairly easy to spot because they are distinctly shaped and they have nuclei, and nuclei are almost always stained. So in this, you can see that this is a lot of cells. Each of these little sort of oddly shaped pieces is its own cell, and inside of it, it has a single nucleus. So these are single cells and single nuclei. The cells are all right next to each other, so they're all touching. And there's not a whole lot of other extraneous stuff or other tissue items surrounding this particular cell structure. So if I was to examine this, I would say, well, there are single cells that are next to each other, and the cells are fairly small. You can tell this simply by the size of the nucleus, the look of the cells, and if you knew the magnification, then that would help as well. But in this case, I would call these cells small, tightly packed, and appear to be in a single layer because there is nothing showing any kind of depth in this image. And in fact, this would be an image of frog skin, which is a simple squamous epithelial layer, and therefore has single cells, each with single nuclei, right next to each other. So now this image has some similarities, but also some differences. For instance, I still see cells. So these are still cells, I see quite a few of them. I still see nuclei. And I still see them right next to each other and they're still not very large, but they are definitely laid out differently than the ones from before. In fact, the way this tissue is put together, you can see that it has dimension. It has an open area at the top and then it comes downward and stacks. So it appears that these cells are actually sitting in some kind of layered structure. So that would be different than the simple cells from before. These would be stratified, as in layered on top of each other. You can see the many nuclei down here near the bottom, and the cells are much smaller, the outlines of them. And then the cells are larger as they move up, and all the way at the top, you can still see cell structures and outlines, but far less nuclei, which is indicative of what you would expect to find near an open surface of a mammalian system like skin, because the cells at the top are already dead and just providing protein, and the cells at the bottom are the ones that are dividing, therefore they are constantly tight together, and there are very many of them. So this would be an example of a stratified squamous epithelial layer seeing the cells layered together near the basement membrane, spreading out, and finally being dead and still layered at the top. Now this structure has a lot more to it that we can examine. For instance, you can see that it is a many-layered structure with an internal section. So this part would be the external portion, then there's some other stuff in here, another layer of things, and then more cells all the way on the inside. So I'm looking for something that would be in an internal layer. Some of these look very different from cells that we have seen previously. There are lots of little dots in this section, but not a lot of distinct cells. The farthest out portion has lots of little dots as well, but a lot of space between them. And then this internal portion seems to be lined. Now we already know that epithelial cells line things, so I would be expecting to look for a layer of epithelial cells around something. And I can tell you that in this case, what you're looking at are the villi of the intestines. These large portions are villi. They stick out into the intestine and help to absorb the food. Let's zoom in on this one. So now, if we get a more zoomed in look on the edges of those villi, it's easy to see that they are indeed cells all the way around this outside edge. They're a little bit hard to catch the outlines of, but you can see them. You can see that they have nuclei, which are 
more than likely these bluish or these reddish structures. And in this particular case, these are the cells that secrete digestive enzymes. And so a lot of these bubbles that you see are goblet cells that secrete digestive enzymes into the intestine. Because I only see really one external layer, I see a lot of cells in here, but it's much more sort of random than structured. So I don't think any of these are epithelial cells. It would be a simple layer. Because these cells are longer in shape, you can see that sort of long extended shape, my expectation is that they would be columnar cells. So let me show you what a edge of a columnar cell might sort of look like. And that's the shape of the columnar cell. And in some of the cases, again, they've got the little goblets in them. So that's our columnar cells. Next up, this tissue looks significantly different from the other ones. There are almost no distinct cell outlines anywhere to be found, and there's lots of other stuff, as it might be, that doesn't seem to have a cellular structure. Now, if you're examining tissues, you can expect to see cells, and you can expect to see stuff which is typically made out of various proteins. And in this case, these are likely to be long strings of various protein fibers. And I see at least two kinds of long strings of protein fibers, these skinny ones that stain darkly, and these lighter colored ones that are in the background. So this tissue has dimension because some of the stuff is in the back and some of it is in the front. It's made out of mostly long stringy proteins, and it doesn't appear to have a tight cellular structure. Now, it does appear to have cells, most likely all of these little dots are indeed a cell of some kind, because these would be the nucleus of a cell that stains, but the cell doesn't seem to be much bigger than the nuclei that are actually involved. So there's a kind of tissue that has smaller sized cells that are separated from each other, and that often has a variety of protein and other structures in between the cells that we tend to call a matrix, and that is a connective tissue, and in fact, this is an example of an areolar connective tissue. I can see the single cell fibroblasts that produce the fibers, the elastic fibers, which are the dark skinny ones, and the collagen fibers, which are the light pink ones. So here's another similar but different tissue. In this case, the cells are more visible and more defined. So this is a nucleus and there is some cell around it, but there's still a lot of space in between them. They're not really quite as tight up on each other as the epithelial cells were. And in fact, you can see these are likely to be epithelial cells on the outside edges. I see these large columnar cells, whereas in here, things look a lot more squishy as it might be, but there's not distinctly noticeable protein Fibers. So it means that the matrix, the surrounding substance, is made of a protein but not necessarily a long stringy fiber. And these little cells, which are each situated in what looks to be sort of a casing around them, this empty space around each of them is a lacunae. So this is an example of cartilage, another connective tissue. This time a special connective tissue in which the cell sits in a lacunae in a protein-based gel-like matrix. It's very much like a gelatin, or as I like to describe it, like a jello fruit salad with a whole bunch of little cherries and pineapples stuck in the jello. So this would also be like a jello fruit salad if you accidentally overused the jello or added something very, very hard to it. Because as you can see, there are still cells so the first thing you want to look for in almost all of these cases is, so where are my cells? And I see these darkly colored pieces, and they are separated from each other, and they are small. So the small separated ones leads me to believe that it is some kind of a connective tissue. And again, I'm looking for the stuff in the middle, and I see lots of that stuff in this case. So these cells are even more spread out. And the stuff, though it has a somewhat fibrous appearance, also seems to have a much more structured appearance than, for example, the areolar tissue from earlier. And that is because this would be bone. In the bone, it has little lines because they act as little canals to bring things from the large 
haversion canal out to the little osteocytes or the cells because they all need nutrients and the nutrients come in from here they travel through these tiny canals so it's a little bit like the way a tree or a leaf is set up with sort of a vein system throughout but it is the third connective tissue now in a row it has a similar look of small cells spread out and stuff in between but it's pretty clear how this stuff looks different from the gel-like substance of the cartilage. Ah, now we have moved on to something completely different. This has an entirely different structure than before. So again, we start by looking for something that is cell-like. We see lots of these little dark stained pieces, but they're a lot closer to each other than in some previous cases. And they are contained inside of something structural, but is a much larger structural piece. And that is because these are not cells, but nuclei of cells, and cells that contain more than one nuclei. So this is a multinucleate cell. And actually this whole piece, or this whole piece, or this whole piece, would actually be a cell in this case with many nuclei in it. So these are very large, very structured cells. They have multiple nuclei, and they are full of other stuff, just like before. In this case, the stuff appears to have a similarly fibrous appearance to our fibers from earlier, but now the fibers are contained, held in a particular manner, and inside of cell membrane-type structures, because these are muscle cells. Muscle cells are large cells with many nuclei that have protein fibers running through the inside of them. And in these, you can even see that all these little lines, they make them look a little bit crimped. Those are striations because they are the muscle fibers lining up right next to each other, giving it a striated look. That's how you would examine muscle. This image is zoomed out a little bit compared to some of the other ones because these cells are so large that they can be hard to get into field sometimes. So if we look for our dark pieces, as we have in the past, we see this dark cell. It's got kind of an odd structure, and maybe these little strings coming out of it. Then I see another one, another one with odd structure, little long pieces coming out. Here's one right in the middle with an odd structure and long pieces coming out. I'm only familiar with one type of tissue with one type of cell that is long, oddly shaped, and has long, skinny pieces, and that would be neurons. Now, does that make sense to the rest of the tissue? There's a lot of surrounding material. Little dots usually do indicate some kind of nuclei. And neurons are typically surrounded by helper or glial cells. So these little dots would represent the glial cells. And you can see a lot of the connection in here. Now, tissues, because of the way that you have to manipulate them to get them on slides, can be problematic. They don't look exactly like they would in real life. So they get squished a little bit more but it's pretty clear that these cells would be further apart from each other and make connections through the long, skinny pieces, which are the dendrites and axons of these neurons. So if I was looking at a tissue that had a lot of spread out parts and a lot of long, skinny bits, I would probably initially not be sure if it was areolar tissue or nervous tissue, but then I would specifically look for large pieces of neurons that I can use to say, yes, that is a cell enclosing a nucleus, and the strings are in between the cells, because the cells are farther apart. There aren't stringy proteins, they're actually stringy, stringy cell structures. Zoom in just a little bit on this neuron so you can see the difference, because you can see how much different the stringy portions or the dendrites of the cell look as compared to for instance, the proteins of the areolar tissue earlier. You can also see that the cell has a distinctly large cell body with the nucleus right in the middle. And that's how I might identify nervous tissue as compared to some of the other ones, large cells with very odd shapes, and not as much stuff surrounding it, often little cells and some surrounding proteins, but mostly the strings would be related to the cell itself. As all four of our tissue types, epithelial with small close together cells and not many visible proteins, muscle with large close together cells 
and proteins on the inside, connective with small far apart cells, and proteins all surrounding them in various ways, and finally nervous with large separated cells and not as many extraneous proteins. Now you may check these out under a microscope and you'll know what you're looking for.